Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Carrie and today I'm doing my May wrap up. I read I don't I don't know how many books. I'll, I'll count at the end because I don't have all of them. So anyway, let's get started. The first one I read was The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This is the first in her Winter Night trilogy, the second of which I read before I read the first. But at any rate, it's about a young girl named Vasya in the winter in Russia. I want to say 1800s, but I could be wrong. Vasya is different. She can see the household demons and stuff like that. And so it's intertwined very much so with Russian folklore. I found thoroughly enjoyable. I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars because it felt a little bit simpler than the second one to me. I did enjoy that it wasn't all exposition though. This book felt like, as a first book, it still had its own plot, it still had its own point and character and flavor, where a lot of the first books I've been reading recently feel as if they're only there to set up for the second. I then listened to A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens on audiobook. I gave this a 3 out of 5, and that's mostly because I liked what I heard of it, but I was so busy driving and there were so many characters and things going on in this book that I need to sit down and physically read it before I can give it a proper rating. So that's on my list for the year. Then I read um, a, The Black Count by Tom Rice. The Black Count is about Alexander Dumas' father, also named Alex Dumas, who was a general, or ro rather rose to the rank of general, during the French Revolution and Napoleonic War. This was a huge feat because he was half black, although I don't know, there's a lot packed into this book and it was so, so good. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. Wholly recommend. Amazing. Next was A Life in Motion, an Unlikely Ballerina by Misty Copeland. This is an autobiography of Misty Copeland, who was the first African American principal ballerina for the American Ballet Theatre. This one I think I gave a 3.5 or 4 out of 5 stars. I did like it more than I liked the young readers because there was a lot more detail in it as the adult version. Um, it was also still very a simplistic writing style, which makes sense, and it's still a good writing style. I liked it, it flowed really well, it was well organized, it made sense, and my favorite part was probably knowing the French terms and the positions and stuff like that as she went through them. So she described what first position is, second, etc., or what a Chenet turn is, and it was really fun to remember doing those and then translate that into how much work and effort and how hard it is for her. Because, I mean, dance is hard anyway. So just the physicality of it, but it was really fun to read. And then I read The Rebel Queen by Michelle Moran, which follows one of an elite group of women warriors who guards Queen Lakshmi in the 1840s and 50s. These women are very elite. They are chosen from any women in the country and there are only 10 of them. So it follows a girl from when she starts training because she has to provide for her sister's diary up until when there is a mutiny in 1856. I thought it was gonna follow the queen a little bit more and it didn't, but that will come in my reviews to be posted soon. So I gave this book, I think a 3.5 or four out, of four, four out of five stars because it wasn't what I expected. It was still good. I love Michelle Moran's writing style and it was really fun to learn about these women that I'd never heard of. Then I read The Bookworm by Mitch Silver. This is a book about a young lady in present-day Russia and her twin brother who is in present-day Alaska working on an oil pipeline. The oil is very important in this story and I did not figure out how until they told me because it made no sense. It did make sense once they explained it but it wasn't something I would have seen. At any rate, she is trying to figure out what these certain documents from World War II have to do with her brother's co-worker. For such a short book, it packed up punch. I think I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars because it was not what I expected, but in the best possible way. Then I read The Jaguar Princess by Claire Bell, which is set in the time of the Aztec Empire in Mexico when they are expanding and taking over other kingdoms. Not countries, kingdoms. I enjoyed this book. I gave it a 3 out of 5. It was fun to read something that was set before the conquest of Mexico in the 1500s, and I liked the main character, 
but it just also seemed a little bit predictable and dull. And honestly, why were there so many men? I'm usually not the person to bring up that there are all men and one women, but it drove me insane in this book for whatever reason. So there's that. I also read Relics of the Dead by Ariana Franklin, finally, which is it during Henry II's reign in the 1100s, and there are these two skeletons that are found at Glastonbury Cathedral. So he calls up his Mistress of the Arts of the Dead, which is, what is her name? Adelia and says, you have to find out if these are Guinevere and Arthur, or if they're not. And basically he wants her to say that they're not definitively Gwen and Arthur, or that they, they're they not definitively not, because if they're not, if they are Gwen and Arthur, then he can say that Arthur is officially dead, and Arthur is not coming back to help the Welsh people against Henry. Um, so whatever that means the king wants her to do, I can't get my knots quite right. Anyway, this was a really good book. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars because the writing is beautiful. It was just really fun and different, and the plot was surprisingly good. There's a diverse cast of characters in this which I loved. And you don't see the king a lot except when he gives her her assignment. So you deal with her and her family, and there's morals wound up in this, and there's religion because obviously they're very, very devoutly Catholic at the time. Just so many good things. My biggest problem was just that she seemed to give up independence and intelligence for romance at the end. But I don't know. I'm still working that out. And the last book I read this month was The Radium Girls by Kate Moore. I give this one a 5 out of 5, hands down. This is a nonfiction about the women of the 1920s, 1910s, 1920s who were painting watch faces in factories with radium. And they had been told repeatedly that radium was safe and that the amounts that were in the paint they were using were minuscule enough that these women were fine, it was healthy for you. And then basically these women all get cancer and die because of the paint. And so it's, the first part is they're painting it and sort of, I don't feel good, why are my teeth falling out? The second part is, um, excuse me, factory, you're killing us. And the factory says, no, we're not. And they say, yes, you are. And they hire a lawyer. And I loved that part because it was just great. And then the third part is, most of us die in our 20s. A fair number of us actually survive to be 70. And I think one of them was 107 when she died, which is amazing. But yeah, it is heart-wrenching. There are definitely some cringeworthy moments where they describe the sarcoma, I think it was called which basically once you got it, you were dead. There was no coming back. And you couldn't come back anyway, but that's not the point. So I just, I loved, loved this book. It did not read as a nonfiction at all. For the first third, I was fairly certain I was reading a fiction. And then I realized that it actually was a nonfiction and they had just, I don't know, found a magical way of writing it amazingly. So those are the nine books that I read in May. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up down below, and if you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button down below. As always, I will leave my Goodreads linked in the down bar, but until my next video, bye.